Well, we're excited to get back out of here tomorrow um, against Missouri State. You know, when we uh, when we scheduled this game um, back in the spring, you know, it's it's one of those games that scares the heck out of you. And uh, and the reason I say that is, you know, they were obviously picked to win the Missouri Valley this year. Um, they got tremendous talent. They really do. And and when we were able to p decide to play, we we're going to play in the uh, the Charleston tournament. You know, you're allowed to get an extra game, and you start to look and say. You know, what games can help us as far as hopefully for the NCAA selection uh, committee? You know, it was clear that Missouri State was the, was the best team um, that would play us in, in that extra game. And uh, fortunate to get them to get a chance to play against them. But like I said, it's a scary game as well. Um, you know, they, they got really good players positionally. They match up very well with our size. Uh, they're big, you know, De Silva. I was a first-team all-conference player last year. I think he's a preseason first-team all-conference player this year as well, preseason selection. Um, Cook is off to a great start this year. He can really score the ball on the wing. He was third-team all-conference last year. And then you bring in a guy like Lamont West, who averaged double figures at West Virginia last year, who's six foot eight, six foot nine, who can kind of play the three and the four for them. And you know their talent level is very good, and they're really going to challenge us uh, on the glass. And we're really trying to prepare our guys. Uh, it's going to be a funky style. Um, you know, they, they, they play really slow. Um, you know, I, a few years back in the NCAA tournament, we played against Notre Dame, and they, they ran the burn offense and try to limit possessions. You know, I'm not saying Missouri State's quite what Notre Dame was, but they're similar. Um, they're really going to try to control the pace. Um, and then on the defensive end, they're going to kind of play funky as well. They play off of guys kind of pack it in real, real tight, try to really protect the paint. Um, so really trying to prepare our guys for those two scenarios over the next couple of days here before we play uh, Missouri State. Travis, it's not often that you uh, face a guy like Jared Ritter, who was part of this program before. Did you, were you in on his recruiting? Were you the lead recruiter there? And um, you know what? I think he's been hobbled um, most of these first three games for them. But what it, you know? What's that like going uh, up against someone you know? Yeah, you know, we I was on staff when we recruited him. Um, you know, Luke Murray was the lead recruiter, but I, I was definitely part of it. Um, you know, Jared is a is a great kid. Can really shoot the ball. You know, unfortunately, he got homesick. You know, and, and uh, he went back to to Springfield, Missouri. So. You know, he's been banged up, like you said, Shannon. Um, but he's a tremendous shooter. You know, we're preparing like he's playing. I know that because uh, he's, a, he's a big X factor for them and their team. Uh, Quentin Gooden has had some struggles here in the early going. I think last game he had six turnovers and one yeah. assist. Um, is his confidence shaken? Is it situational? Like, what, what's kind of going on with him right now? You know, I don't, I don't think his confidence is shaken. Um, you know, I do think, you know, Unfortunately for him, he had a couple of really nice passes, and you know everybody looks at that assist to turnover, and he probably should have had four or five assists. Um, but unfortunately, our guys didn't weren't able to finish through contact or or make that open three that that maybe he had helped kind of create. Um, you know, Q, 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 Q's a senior; he's going to be fine. There's there's highs, there's lows individually. Um, as a team, there's going to be highs and lows throughout the season, and the key is just to stay you know just stay even keeled. And, and he knows the deal. I mean, he's been through a lot of wars, a lot of ups and downs throughout his career. And, and, uh, and again, I have more, more than enough confidence in him that he'll get it right. Well, what do you want to see of him against Missouri State? What, do you, what yeah. are the, kind of some of the things that you want to see improvement in? You know, number one, defensively. You know, again, I want to see him be better off the ball. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've talked to him about that. Just his discipline off the ball uh, has to be better. Um, and then I think secondly, just is control the game, you know, and, and be that calming influence, you know, be able to get us into stuff when we need to get into plays or whatever it is. Um, he's got to play with more poise, especially even in the paint, you know, just making decisions, um, be a better decision maker, but he, he'll get there. Uh, is there an update on Daniel Ramsey? Is he uh, back with you guys able to practice? He has not practiced yet. Um, you know, it's been a it's been a long process, obviously. Um, unfortunately for him, I know he wants to be back out on the floor. Um, he shot around the other day, yesterday, which was good to see, because um, that's the first time I hadn't seen him in a jersey, Shannon. And God, it's been about three weeks almost. It seems like uh, so that that was good. So it's a little bit of progress. He he is not full go though yet. Um, hopefully, our our our, uh, our hope is he will be next week when we go to Charleston. 
And then you have uh, three signed uh, national letters of intent um, with uh, Dewan Odom, C.J. Wilcher, and Colby Jones. Um, can you speak about each player and, and what yeah. you like about them? You know, I think overall for those three guys, you know, they are, uh, number one, they're tremendous kids. And they're going to be great representatives of, of Xavier University and, and our basketball program. Uh, but they're winners, I mean, all three of them. They've all won state titles. Um, they, they, wherever they, whatever they've been AAU-wise, they've all won big. And, and, and that's really, really important um, to us. You know, but specifically, you know, we'll talk about Dewan first. You know, Dewan, you know, he committed to us a long time ago. Uh, it seems like it was almost dang near two years ago, whatever it was, a year and a half ago. Um, you know, Dewan is, he is a leader, you know, first and foremost. You know, he, you always talk about guys that have it. He has that it factor. You know, people are attracted to him, his personality. He's got a big personality. Um, he's loud. Uh, he does. He's not afraid to call out teammates, which which is hard to find nowadays. Um, he's tough. He's competitive. He's obviously freakishly athletic. Um, he's as explosive as an athlete as we've probably had here since I've been here, just vertically and, and lateral and stuff. I mean, he is very very explosive. Um, but he's a he is a pure point guard. He can really pass the ball, sees things, understands who he is as a player. I'm um, really excited to add him to, to the fold. Um, then we've added uh, C.J. Wilcher. You know, he committed to us back, I think, last June, I think, around there. Um, C.J., he's, he's kind of a combination between, you know, Trayvon Blewett and, and, and Miles Davis. You know, he, he kind of gives you that feel of the skill level, shot making. You know, he's six foot five. He's got good size. He's strong. He's long, knows how to play, knows how to get his shot off. Um, off the dribble, off the catch, he's got unlimited range. And he's just got that, uh, he's got a ton of confidence. He does. He's got that, he wants to have the ball in that big moment. Um, so I'm really excited about adding him um, to the fold. And then Colby Jones, who committed to us back in August. Um, Colby, he, he's like a utility knife. You know, he just, he does a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, I think he almost averaged, if not, he may have averaged a double-double in the UIBL from the wing position. Um, he is an incredible defender, um, great decision maker, skilled, sees things, can pass the ball, really handle the ball for 6'5". I mean, he could play one, he could play the one, two, three. He could probably play the four if you wanted him to. Uh, he could do anything on the floor. Um, really excited about adding him just with his versatility. He fits the way that we play to a T. You know, a lot has been made on kind of the shooting struggles through three games, but you've said it yourself, your, your best perimeter player, your best perimeter shooter has not even touched the floor yet in Kiki Tandy. So can you kind of update us on, on where he's at? I know we, we've seen him running a little bit, so that's obviously more progress. Yeah, you know, I, I obviously, you know, Adam, I'll, I'll attack the shooting piece first even. And, and, I, and I think, again, you can't flinch. You know, if we have an open shot, we're going to take it. Just the way it goes. You know, we can't settle. We got to know, understand what what's a good shot, what's a bad shot, and I think that's important. And and that's ever evolving as the year goes on. And and people, hopefully, will appreciate it. You know, our our team's going to look a lot different than it is does right now. You know, it just it, it's progress, right? And it's a process. Um, but we're going to get there offensively. I have full confidence in our guys uh, getting to get it there. Um, but yeah, obviously, you know, Kiki. Um, he, he's been our best shooter. Uh, he is our best shooter. Um, we, we would love to have him out there on the floor. And I think he is getting closer and closer to getting back on the floor. He's been working out, uh, which has been good. You know, limited, no contact or anything like that. Um, you know, my, my plans, it could, it, you know, probably going to be after Charleston, but it, it potentially could be next week as well. It just kind of depends how it goes, how his foot feels. One of the things I was curious about after the Missouri game, you brought up the Najee Marshall game tying three and kind of how you found out about that by watching Villanova mm -hmm. use it. And I was curious, when, when you're scouting other teams, like how often does that happen where you see something that they do and you think, you know what, we might be able to make this work too? Yeah, you know, we all steal from each other, you know. So, um, you know, a lot. You may say, hey, man, I really like this. I think this could fit. Or you may morph it to your personnel. 
um, or, or maybe something that you already run to make it harder to scout, right? You always try to f kind of figure out maybe it's a concept. It may not be the exact same thing, but something similar. Uh, but you're always looking for, again, how, how can I do things better? How can we continue to put our guys in better positions um, to be successful on the offensive and defensive end, you know, so on both sides of the floor. You're always kind of looking for new things, even as you just casually watch at night. Like I'll, a lot of times I'll have my laptop on my lap and uh, I'll be watching Missouri State while I have another game on in the background as well. And, and you may see something that you like from an NBA game or, or, or a college basketball game. And I may say, hey, Trey Scotty, they, they're at this at 15.30 in the second half of the whatever game last night, hey, can you pull that up for me? I want to I look at that a little bit more. Um, and then Trey will take care, clip it up for me and so I can watch it. And with that particular Villanova play, do you remember, was that live in the moment that you reacted that way? And yeah, thought, that, yeah. Was, that was live. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you, we knew the Villanova, I obviously knew the Villanova team really well, and they had ran it before that year, so you kind of knew it was coming. Uh, but they were still able to execute, obviously, in the biggest moment of biggest moments, right, in college basketball. Um, they were able to execute it, get a good look. Are there, is there a short list of like, of other teams or coaches that, that you go to and you think kind of maybe I can find some inspiration from the way they do things? Uh, you know, you know, you probably, I probably lean on the guys that I know best, you know, whether that's, you know, you know, Chris Mack, Sean Miller, uh, Thad Motto, or my brother, John Gross. But like, you know, you also know kind of the identities of, of certain programs, right? Like, um, when you think of a Bob Huggins team, you think of like smash mouth basketball, right? You know, you think of kind of old, like you know, early 2090s, and that's how they play. So if, you, if you're looking for maybe something to, to get Tyreek the ball or something a little bit more physical around the rim, it might be good to watch a, watch a West Virginia game, maybe watch their offense, maybe see, see if you can steal one thing away from them, a concept. Um, you know, but different programs are known for different things, right? And uh, so I think you kind of go about it that way. The uh, the game the other night, you know, I think it obviously wasn't pretty, but like we established after that game, you found a way to get it done. And I'm curious, do you do you talk to your team about how important that is? Like the ever at some point during the year, every team's going to have to be able to win an ugly game. Things aren't going to go right. They're going to have to find a way. Like, is that something that you impress upon your team? Yeah, you know, I think guy, I think any good team finds a way to win. You know, whether they play well or not, and you know, our defense is always going to give us a shot. It will always be able to keep us in every single game. It will give us a shot to win. And then obviously we got to make a few shots. Yeah, we'd like to make a few shots, and, and then we're going to win big. Um, but at the same time, though, again, like I think last year, if I rewind it to last year's team, I'd, last year's team would not have won that game. And our, 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 I think our poise that we had down the stretch um, on the offensive end and the defensive end, of able, the ability to execute, and we just looked slower, which is good. You know, it's like I told those kids, no, nobody should ever be able to speed you up at the end of the game. I don't care if there's one second on the clock, two seconds. It's, it, that's an eternity. And, uh, and I, thought, I thought our guys have grown in that area, you can kind of tell. Whereas last year, anything could have happened. You know, you know, we could draw up something, but it, anything could have happened. And, and uh, I think our guys have really matured and give Najee and Paul and, and Quentin and Tyreek and, and Jason did a great job the other night, give those guys a lot of credit. Uh, Travis, the last 20 seconds of regulation against Mizzou sort of reminded me of East Tennessee State like a couple of years ago. Yeah. The score was different, but yep. I mean, the execution was like all dead on. Yeah, you know, we watched that. The, yesterday, Andy and and um, you know obviously we hit a, Najee hit a big shot and then we had fouls to give um, at the end of end of regulation and uh, we wanted to make sure that we tried to obviously shorten up that clock for them so they couldn't run their play yeah. and you know even the one time though the one the one mistake we made was you know I wanted we were we were in what I call diamond on the side right in, in those in those possessions when they took the ball side out of bounds and Jason should have trapped the kid because you can get a free trap at that point in the game you think about it it's, the team's going to hold for the last shot that's their whole mentality right they, they want to hey we're either going to win the game or we're going to go to overtime and so they're going to hold it even if you you can get a so what i say by free trap is you can get a trap and they're not going to look to score out of it you're not going to get penalized for that and so we talked about that because it's all, everything every moment and every experience is a learning experience 
and hopefully we'll continue to grow from that. But I thought we executed the fouling piece really well. Uh, Najee did a great job of contesting the shooter in the corner on the UOB play. We did a great job of blocking out because that's how a lot of games are won or lost in those moments. It's not on the first shot. It's on that second shot at tip in. Guys start ball watching to see, hey, is it going to go in or not? It's a game winner. right? I thought our guys did a great job of blocking out as well. Uh, talking about uh, Q and confidence, he knocked down the free throws in the OT. He did. You know, again, I, I, got, I got the utmost confidence Q. I mean, he, he, he's been in big moments before. He, he, he knocked them in. You could tell. I knew they were going in. And, and he had that kind of quiet confidence about him. And our team did there to, in overtime as well. We made a lot of free throws, uh, which, which is good for us moving forward. Uh, speaking of watching other games, how much, if any, of the of the uh, the Big East, the, the, the Gavit games, have you been able to watch? And you, any any thoughts on that? You know, I, I watched a little bit of the Villanova Ohio State and a little bit of the Marquette um, Purdue game last night. You know, you know Villanova is going to be really good, and anybody that doesn't think so is is, is crazy. Um, you know, again, sometimes it's not your night. You know, again, it's a road game for them. They have a lot of young guys. They're going to look a heck of a lot different here in a couple of weeks than they do right now, uh, especially as they continue to get healthy because right? they still got a couple of guys out. And then, um, you know, Marquette, wanna, they're, they're tough. They got tough dudes, and they got Marcus Howard, who, <laughs> who is as good of a guard as there is in the country. And, and uh, they beat a really hard-nosed, tough Purdue team. It kind of reminded me a little bit of our game uh, that we had against Missouri. It was just kind of hard fought. Um, you know, possession by possession by possession, nothing, nothing was given by e either team. Um, again, you could tell. You know, I caught a little bit of DePaul, Iowa the other a few days ago, and DePaul looked really good. They're very, very, very talented. So, um, hopefully, the Big East can continue uh, to do some good things here tonight. Thank you.